All right, let's do a couple of more practice problems in chapter eight. So we get, a, get the hang of these dividend problems. Now really, dividend problems are no different than traditional cash flow pro problems. Just sometimes we have this additional, um, this terminal cash flow that we call it, and then we use the dividend growth model. So this first problem, the next dividend payment will be 234 per share. The dividends are anticipated to maintain a growth rate of 4.5% forever. If the stock currently sells for $37 per share, what's the required return? Okay, so first thing, what are we looking for? A required return. If you remember that formula, what's the required return? Well, it's what you're gonna get if you own this share of stock. It's the dividend yield plus growth. Growth is given in the problem. They tell us it's 4.5%. Dividend yield is the dividend next year divided by the price. And we can see, so here's our growth number, 4.5%. This 4.5% is my, sorry, 4.5% is my dividend yield. And then my dividend next year will be 234. So 234 is the, <laughs> that was ugly. 234 is the dividend, it's a one, it's a dividend a year from now, and the current price is 37. So given that, I'm going to try to draw that again. That was, uh, that was a mess. So given that, Here's our formula that we learned before, our dividend yield over, over the growth rate. So we know dividend sub one is 234. We know our growth rate's 4.5%, and we know the stock price is $37. So when we put that in the formula, it's the 234, the current dividend divided by the price, plus the growth of 4.5%. So our total return is 10.82%. And, and if someone were to ask you, so what's my dividend yield? It's this 6.32%. So the required return is made up of your dividend yield of 6.32% plus 4.5% of growth. Okay, next problem. Hudson Corporation will pay a dividend of 328 per share next year. The company pledges to increase its dividend by 375. Um, indefinitely. If you require a return of 10% on your investment, how much will you pay for the company stock? Okay, so how much will you pay for the stock means we're looking for a price. The dividend is 328 per share next year. That's D, D sub 1. It's going to increase its dividend by 3.75%. That's the growth rate. Indefinitely tells us we can use the dividend growth model and we require a return of 10%. Okay, so pause the recording, work on this problem, and then, uh, and then come on back. All right, we know this formula from before. Our, our price at some time period is equal to our dividend next year divided by our, our required return minus our growth rate. Well, what are we looking for? We're looking for the price in time period zero, and we know the dividend in time period one. We know the required return, and we know the growth rate. So my dividend a year from now is 328. My dividend a year from now is 328. My required return is 10%. My growth rate is 3.75%. So we take our dividend and divide it by the required return minus the growth rate to show that for this particular stock, given this required return and this, and this dividend policy, we'd be willing to pay $52.48 for the right to own this stock. Okay, let's take a look at another one. Burnett Company pays a constant 825 dividend on its stock. It will maintain this dividend for the next 13 years and then will cease paying the dividend forever. The required return on the stock is 11.2%. What's the current share price? Okay, pause the, require, the uh, recording and work on this problem and then come on back. All right, so what do we know? We've got a dividend of 825 and, um, on the stock. It's gonna pay that dividend for 13 years and then most importantly, then it's going to cease paying dividends after that point. So once we're gonna cease, sorry, I can't find this pen, the, the, the marker is really low. So if we're gonna cease payment, we know we can't use that dividend growth model. That's not going to work. So what do we have here? We have a dividend of 825 for 13 years. It's the exact same dollar amount every year for 13 years. That's an annuity or a payment only 13 years and they require an 11.2 percent and we're trying to find a current share price so we're trying to find a present value or a net present value either one will work in this case so what do we know for the 
um, present value formula, we know we've got an N of 13. We have no future value. Our rate is 11.2%. Our payment amount is 8.25%. And we compute the present value, and we get 5513. Now, you could have done an NPV. You would have had to start at time period 0. And then for years 1 through 13, we'd have a payment of 825 and when you use the NPV formula, remember it's equals NPV, parentheses, the rate of 11.2%, comma, and then only capture the years 1 through 13 um, payments. Do not include 0. 0 goes outside of the parentheses. Okay? Um, 55.13 on that one. All right, let's try another one. Maurer has an odd dividend policy. The company just paid a dividend of 275 and has announced that it will increase the dividend by 450 per share for each of the next five years and then never pay another dividend. If you require an 11% return, how much will you pay for the share today? Okay, pause, look, work on this one, and then come on back. All right, so this isn't all that odd. Um, we know that the dividends are going to pay for five years and then stop. We cannot use the dividend discount model. Um, that only works in perpetuity. So what do we have? We have a just paid a dividend of 275. That's D sub 0. We know that's not included in the price of the share anymore. It's going to increase by 450 each year for five years, and, and then it's going to stop. So what do we have? We have a series of future values that we need to find the present value for, or we need to find a net present value. So our dividend in year one is the 275 we got last time plus 450, so it's 725. Our dividend in year two is the 725 plus 450, or 1175. Our dividend in year three is 1625. Year four, we add 450 again. And year five, we add 450 yet again to come up to 2525. We have a required return of 11%. So given that, we use the NPV formula, 11%, comma, and then, and then capture the next five years. So the years 1 through 5, the 725, the 1175, the 1625, 2075, and 2525. And when you compute, you'll come up with a price of 5660. All right. Sinovec is growing quickly. Dividends are expected to grow at a rate of 30% for the next three years, with the growth rate falling off to a constant 4% thereafter. The required return is 11%, and it just paid a dividend of 245. What's the current share price? Pause and uh, work this problem and come on back. All right, so what do we know? So dividends are going to grow quickly for a few years, so we can't use the dividend growth model in those first years. But Beginning in year four, dividends are going to grow at 4% thereafter. So if they're going to start growing at a constant rate in year four, we can find the price in year three. But we need to include those dividends we're going to get in years one, two, and three because they're not included in that price in year four. We've got, um, we just paid a dividend 245. That's D sub zero, sort of our starting point, And we have an 11% rate of return. So if we have a 245 dividend in year zero, it's going to grow by 30%. That means in year one, our dividend's 31.85. That dividend's going to grow by 30%. So in year two, our dividend's going to be 414. That dividend will grow by 30%. So in year three, our dividend's 53, 538. And then from there on after, dividends are only going to grow by 4%. So our dividend in year four is just about $5.60. A discount rate of 11% and a growth rate of 4%. What do we know? We can use the dividend discount model to find the price in year three because the dividends start growing at a constant rate in year four. So there's the formula for it. So our price in year three is our dividend in year four of 538. Um, sorry. The dividend in year four is 559. So we can either use, we can either look at the dividend in year three, which is the 538 multiplied by 1.04 to get our dividend in year four. So our dividend in year four is 560. Our dividend in year four divided by the required return of 11% minus the growth rate of 4% gives us a price of $79.97. Okay, that's what we'd be willing to pay for it in year three. But we also have a dividend in year one, two, and three, and this price in year three, but we want to know what we'll pay for it today. 
So now we have to add all these cash flows together. We have the 3185 in year one, the 41405 in year two, and then in year three we have that 538 dividend plus that price of 7991. And remember, what that price represents is the value of the stock in year three, taking into consideration the dividend in year four, five, six, seven, 438, 439, all of those future dividends. So this encapsulates all of the cash flows associated with this project, a year one dividend, a year two, a year three dividend, and then a price that in year three that covers everything after year three. So we can do this as an NPV. We have the rate of 11%, and then we have three cash flows, the, 31, the 318 in year one, the 414 in year two, and then the 85,353, which represents the dividend in year three plus the, um, the the, um, the dividend discount model, the price in year three. When we do that calculation, we end up with an overall price for this um, stock for, of 68.64. Okay, so hopefully you found these problems to be helpful, a little bit more practice before you get to the homework problems. If you have any questions about any of them, let me know. Thanks.